Hi guys, I'm Daniel and I'm helping you to become a better RPA developer. In this tutorial, I just want to give you a quick way how you can do most of the common operation that are related to browser, like how you open a browser, how you type into, how you click and how you close. And these are the common operations if you want to do a web automations. As a requirement, you need to know the basic UiPath elements, how you find buttons on the screen, how you can create a reliable selector and how do you do data manipulation. If you're an absolute beginner and you want to be able to create these automations and get the UiPath Developer Foundation Diploma, I do have a course that takes you from zero to get that certification. I will leave some links in the description. So let's get started. I'm gonna use Chrome and Internet Explorer. However, UiPath Studio is able to talk with other browser. Now for that, you need to have an extension installed. How you install an extension? Well, I'm here in the, I have actually an empty project, which is named browser. I'm going in the, under the home and here under the tools, we do have some extensions available. Now I do have the Chrome, the one which I have here installed. For Edge, I need to have this extension, which I'm not gonna use it. For Internet Explorer, there's no need to have any extension. And for Firefox, I don't have this extension installed, but I do use Firefox on a daily basis. And for this tutorial, I'm just gonna show you how you can use Chrome and Internet Explorer. So the first step is to go here on the Chrome. Now you'll receive that the Chrome extension was enabled. So I'm just gonna click okay. Now I need to open Chrome, which I do have here open. And you can check that the extension has been enabled by having this button. And if I want to make it blue, I will just go here in the navigate too. And let's say google.com. Now, right now we are on the google.com website. And even if you're, uh, it seems the same, this is actually the Google homepage. This is the homepage of the Chrome browser. So right now I can access uh, the current website because this one is blue. And actually I'm just going back. And as a first example, I'm going to do a simple automation. I'll go here on the google.com. I'll write here something. I will press enter, then I'm gonna retrieve a value from here and then I'll use navigate to. So let's see how we can do that. So first we need to open browser. Now there are a couple of methods to do that and the recommended way is to use recording web. And let's click, let's close any files. So I need to open a browser, which I need to confirm that this address is a google.com. I hit okay. Then I need to type, type here. So let's say weather. What's the weather right now? I make sure that the field is empty. I'm confirming with the enter. And now I need to press an actual enter. And I do have two methods. I could either use the same type or I can send another send hotkey or another type. Now for this example, I'm just gonna use send hotkey. So I'll choose send hotkey. I'm gonna select again this page. And from this key, I'll choose enter. And I'm gonna confirm with okay. And let's pick this number. This is the current temperature. Uh, it's right now it's in Celsius and it's not Fahrenheit. So let's copy this text. I'm gonna select this value. And now I can save and exit or I can choose to close tab. And actually I'm gonna show you how you can do this step after we have done this web recording. But if you select close tab and close browser, you are able to interact with the same session. So you're gonna close the same session. Now let's hit save and exit. So let's see what you have generated for us. So we are able to interact with the browser when we have this open browser activity. Now you can do this activity manually uh, and actually I'm gonna show you, so open browser, if you type here and you just drag and drop, it's the same activity here, but you need to specify this URL. So this should be the address and you need to specify this browser type. And as you can see, in our case, we are using Chrome. Now I'll not do this because these activities, they have been generated, but I just want to show you these steps. So you should be able to do this operation manually. So let's click delete. Okay, now we are just grabbing the weather. Now, usually 
The first step when you do an automation is to check that the selectors are properly made. So I'm going to do this in this step. So in this case, it's just um, trying to identify the tag input with the type text. For me, this selector, it seems to OK. It's typing enter and it's grabbing the text with, I don't know, I don't see anything related to weather. So this selector, maybe I would like to make more robust to be, uh, I'm looking for, I don't know, something related to the temperature or something more specifically, if there is exist. So this is the current selector. I'm looking something to weather. Maybe I'm going to find to the upper element. Not really. And it seems that I need to go with this tag. Otherwise, there's no way to uh, find something with more robust. OK, so let's keep this selector the same. I'm just going to hit cancel. And this text I have in this variable, which I'll give a rename. So let's say temperature. And let's display this temperature on the screen. So using a message box. And let's give a proper formatting. So I'll use the string var format. There are degrees now. And let's say the temperature format. Now, if I'm going to run this, I'll have a new tab open every time. So the close is not done. Now I can do here my either choose browser. So I have all the browser activities by default and I'm just looking for the close tab, which I'll say after. Actually, I can say I can put the close tab just after what I have read the temperature. The message box can be uh, display after. So let's give a run to this robot. I can close this dialog. OK, so it's entering on Google.com. It's writing weather. It's grabbing the 11 degrees. And unfortunately, I have on the other screen. I'm just going to drag and drop these message dialogs. So there are 11 degrees now. Great. Now, how do we navigate to? So let's say we are from the Google.com. I'm just going to go here. So let's say we would like to navigate under Yahoo.com. And let's do the same operation. So first, we like to be on the uh, Google.com. Then here, write Yahoo and write weather. And we don't have, unfortunately, the same behavior. Maybe we have on the Bing.com. Ah, yes, we do. So let's do the same. Let's navigate on the Bing.com. And let's type weather and uh, grab the same value. So how we do that? Well, we already have this session open. Now we do have two methods. Either we can open a new session or I can use the same session. And actually, I'm going to choose to use the same session. So first, I need to navigate to. Now I need to navigate to just after this text has been read. So I need to navigate to bing.com. And this time, I'll perform the same automation steps, which these three fields, but I'll not use the recording web. I'm just going to do the steps manually. So first, I need to be on the bing.com. And then I will need to actually, let's be on the bing.com. Let's type here in this dialog, weather. So I'm just going to add an activity. And let's say type into. OK, I need to select the element inside the browser. I'm going to select this. And here I need to specify the text, which will be weather. Now, because this is a text, I cannot say like that. So I need to add double quotation marks. OK, and then I need to specify an enter. Actually, I'm going to simulate this behavior side by side with the robot. Uh, the robot until I'll not run it it will not perform the steps. So I will not have the same behavior like I had here in this web. So let's send a hotkey. I need to select the element again. 
And actually I can use the same selector. Let's make sure that this selector is robust. Well, this form, it seems that it's actually not robust. By the way, but the reason I have this error is because I have this URL google.com. That's a side behavior. And actually it's not recommended uh, to do this type of operation. The reason I'm doing this is just to show you the capabilities and to make a comparison between recording and doing these steps manually. Ideally, I would close this open tab, open browser, sorry, and I'll open a new one. So let's make an assumption that this selector is robust. But again, uh, the reason this one is not valid is because I have this on google.com. It still search the parent ID, which is google.com. Okay, so I'm gonna select the element. Again, I'll type here in the weather. I'm gonna send the enter. And let's say get text. Let's type the enter also. And let's get the text from this 11. And let's make sure that this selector actually is robust. And in this case, it's not robust, but I cannot check that. Uh, because I can see that in the value it's the 11 degrees Celsius and it's actually not correct. But this time I'm going to leave this selector as a bug. This is a bug by the way. So I need to have this uh, temperature uh, here. Now I have already a temperature for Google. So I'm going to rename this variable temperature Google. I will set a variable here temperature Bing. And I'm just gonna leave this close tab here at the end. And I like to say there are 11 degrees with Google and another format with Bing. I need to specify temperature Google and then temperature Bing and hit okay. Now I'm just gonna close this and run and by the way, I don't recommend to use this approach. Now I did this just a tutorial to show you how you can uh, perform these steps manually. Uh, every time when you need to uh, do this type of interaction, use the open browser and close browser every time when you want. So we do have this message box. I'm just gonna drag and drop here. There are 11 degrees with Google and 11 with Bing. Great. Now using the click activity is the same. So I can issue a click and actually maybe we can find on bing.com something. So let's type weather. And I don't find anything. Let's find the first link maybe. Yeah, let's find the first link. So select the element. I'm not sure if this selector was found. I will try to say as a lecturer the value. So I like to type on the BBC weather and let's wait five seconds. So let's make a delay. Okay, and to delay, I'll say zero, 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 five. Just to see the behavior that we're actually navigating to, uh, to the BBC weather. I'm gonna close the Chrome and it will open a new one. Great, it's navigated on the BBC weather. As you can see, it's loading. And probably uh, BBC is way slower uh, and in five seconds it will close. And I do have the message box, which is on the other screen. Great, now how do I change this web browser to be uh, other type of browser? So just by choosing this Chrome, just by choosing EA, it will use Internet Explorer. Now, if I'll run this, it will work with Internet Explorer. However, uh, that's not 100% accurate. Actually, I'm gonna show you here. You may encounter bugs. Um, so it's recommended every time when you change the browser type, don't be so sure that it will work. Not every selector works. And especially data scraping. Now this time, as you can see, I have the same behavior. So it's actually good. Now you may wonder what happened if I don't have the extension installed. So definitely it will crash. Actually, I can show you if I'm gonna choose Edge. So let's run this process. I expect to have it crash. Probably the Edge, it's, uh, it's open. 
but it's not able to navigate to because I don't have the extension installed. So probably after uh, 30 seconds, because this is a default timeout, I would expect to have a crash, which indeed is happening. Uh, cannot communicate with the browser, please check the UiPath extension. Great. So these are the common operations where you're using uh, when you create a web automation. The recording, by the way, it's something which I highly recommend to use it. And after you have used the recording, the first step, please keep in mind to check the selectors and make sure you have created a reliable selector. If you want to see all the steps, how you can create a reliable selector, subscribe. I'm going to post a video soon. Now, as the last thing which I like to point it out, I have choose to make these steps just for tutorial purposes. I will never ever choose a navigate to because what's happened after navigate to every selector it's invalid. And as you can see, well, the reason this one it's, uh, it's not valid is uh, because I don't have the Chrome open. Now, if I open Chrome and I'm gonna hit edit selector, I do have this selector now valid. Now what's after? It will not be valid anymore because you're referring to uh, not anymore google.com, but to bing.com. But I show you just for tutorial purposes. Don't ever, ever do that in production. Now, there are other activities which you can use. For instance, go back, go forward or go home, uh, refresh and set web. Uh, something which is very common is the attach browser. So the attach browser, after we have open, then if you like to interact with a page which is already open, the only way which you can do that is with attached browser. And actually, I'm going to show you how you can do that. I like to split this navigate to. So uh, let's say I like to open first the browser, google.com. And then what I have here, I'm going to select with control. And all these activities, I would like to put I'm going to use cut control X, drag and drop attach window. And inside the attach browser, I'm going to hit the paste. I'm going to collapse and probably there are a couple of variables which I do have defined. I need to change the scope. So I'm going to select the big scope. Okay. Uh, then this message box, I'm going to cut and paste it after. So just at the end. Okay, so now my workflow should be okay. However, I need to tell which is this selected thing. So I will just choose for this particular case to put the navigate to in my this uh, open browser as the last activity. This is just to make sure that I do have these selectors valid. Now, if I'm gonna choose this navigate to here, I'm going to have the same problem previously. I will attach to a browser that has a navigate to Google, and then I'm going to change to navigate to Bing. So what I'd like to do, I'm just going to do as a last step to navigate to Bing. And after I am at the Bing.com, I'll indicate the browser, select Chrome. Now I'm going to check the selector. It's okay. So it has a title Bing. Now the subset selectors, I expect to have it now valid, which it's happening. It's actually is the case. Uh, so if I will just run this uh, flow, I should expect to have the same behavior, but this time it's split in two parts. And by the way, all the activities which you can put inside the open browser, you can uh, put inside the attached browser. The only difference is because uh, open browser, it's opening a new one, but the attached one, it's attaching to something which exists already. And of course, the message box, I do have on the other screen. I'm just going to drag and drop here. Great. Now that was for today. I hope you have a lot of value from this. If you like this type of content, hit that like subscribe button. Also, if you do have any other question, drop here a comment. I will just love to see your reaction. And that was for today. See you next time.